Open your Bibles to the book of Matthews. Every praise is to our God. Book of Matthews, 25th chapter. Sister Wilson, stand up. Let's wish you, Sister Wilson, a happy birthday. Amen. She was in Las Vegas for her birthday, and I know she won a whole lot of money. Amen. So every praise is to our God. <laughs> Matthew, the 25th chapter. The text is going to be from verses 17 through verse 30, but I'm just going to read verse 26, 27, and 28 today. Matthew 25th chapter. If you found us, say amen. amen. If you haven't, say hold on. Okay. Fifth chapter, Matthew the 25th chapter, verses 26, 27, and 28. You found it? Say amen. 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 It says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. Am I right, Minister Renfrew? Am I on the right verse? My computer is. Okay. What did you say? Let me see your Bible. I can't see that a little right. Wait a minute. You want me to read it? I'm having problems with my computer. There's, there's, Let me see. Where am I? Hold on. Let me see that. Hold on. Listen, that's not the right scripture. Hold on a second. Listen, let me read the scripture. Just listen to the scripture, okay? It says that while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it all you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. That's Matthew 26. I'm sorry. I'm having problems with my computer. That's Matthew 26, verses, the 26th chapter, verse 26, 27, and 28. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for getting our word right this morning. We thank you for giving us the right scripture. We thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence today. We ask that this word go forth with clarity, with conviction, that somebody might be saved, somebody might be healed, somebody might be delivered, and somebody might be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today about meaningful ministry at mealtime. Meaningful ministry at mealtime. If you read the life of Jesus, it seems like he enjoyed meals, he, like he enjoyed eating meals and fellowshipping with others. Because all, all through the, the New Testament, we find Jesus having meal times with his disciples. And while eating with them, he was sharing meaningful messages to help ministry move forward. You remember him on the mountainside taking five loaves? And two fish and feeding 5,000 with his Meals on Wheels program after they had been with him all day long listening to him preach and watching him heal. He takes two fish and five loaves and gives them a visual, a visual demonstration of a fact that God can provide. Can't you see him at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus engaging in food and fellowship with them? Can't you see him after last Sunday on the day he was resurrected from the dead? He's making his way to a place called Emmaus. Emmaus and while walking on the road to Emmaus, he sees two gentlemen. Uh, he walks with them. He talks with them along the road. And by the time he gets to their house, my Bible says in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, he sits with them for a meal and he takes bread and he breaks it. And after giving thanks for it, they recognize that this is the risen Savior because they had him break bread before. They, they knew of the meaningful ministry of Jesus around mealtime. Can't you see the Lord Jesus the day after his resurrection when the disciples, those whom he had called away from fishing, they went back to fishing and that after he was crucified and while they were on the water, my Bible says they caught nothing. And, and as they came back to the shore the next day, Jesus is standing on the shore and he recognizes that they haven't caught anything so he tells them to dip their net again and they catch more fish and the net starts breaking. And as they're coming back to the beach, Jesus is already prepared 
at breakfast on the beach. Jesus loves meal time. He loves taking this time to ensure that his sons and daughters, that those who would be his followers, his disciples would know something significant about his ministry. The Lord Jesus uses meal time to ensure that those who follow him and have meals with him know something about the kingdom of God. If you see this today, right here today, this represents the table. This was made by Deacon Ken Williams uh, that he made for this church. And I found it in the closet and I brought it out because this is our communion table. Thank God for Deacon Ken Williams. Okay. You know, everybody else has this big table down in the front with eight candles and all this stuff on it. But we have our own created table created by a man of God. Amen. So in today in our text in Matthew chapter 26, that's exactly what the Lord Jesus is doing. He's taking time to ensure as he gets ready to pass from the scene of ministry that those who have been walking with him know about something about who he is and what he does and what he's going to do that will make a significant difference for the rest of their lives. Here's the Lord at the table with the disciples and they're going to celebrate a tradition honored in the Jewish community that is celebrated to this very day is called Passover. We've talked about Passover before. Uh, Passover means how God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, how God blessed them, how God sustained them, how God has spared them, how God saved them with the blood of the lamb sprinkled on the doorposts of their homes. You remember that, don't you? So every year annually, annually they celebrate this Jewish festival by eating unleavened bread, and they would celebrate the Passover to ensure that they would never forget what God did for their ancestors and by proxy for them. So here they are gathered around this Passover table. And while they're there, Jesus takes this moment to provide meaningful ministry to those who would be his disciples. He takes dinner time to develop discipleship. He takes dinner time to develop discipleship. Yes, he takes this moment to ensure that these men will understand ministry on a whole different level. Here the Lord Jesus is, and if you look back at verse 17, the disciples' first question to Jesus is they ask him, where are we going to eat this Passover? Listen, the Passover is actually held on the 14th day of Nisan in the Jewish calendar when they would prepare the Passover land. Listen to this. The Jewish calendar is connected with the sun and the moon. And you know the eclipse is coming in a couple of days and everybody's freaking out about an eclipse. But there was an eclipse when Jesus Christ was held on the cross of Calvary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So when I opened this text, the Lord said to me, if I'm going to be a de dedicated disciple, I have to have an understanding of following Jesus no matter what. And what Jesus says to the disciples is do whatever is necessary, but do it without delay. When the disciples ask Jesus, where are we going to eat dinner? Jesus says, listen, in verse 18, he says, go over into a city and you'll find somebody walking around and he's going to show you where we're going to have this Passover dinner. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke are also known as the Synoptic Gospels in the New Testament tell the story in different degrees. Matthew doesn't give us a whole lot of detail, but Mark and Luke go into various degrees of detail to let us know how significant this moment is. Because Matthew and Mark and Luke is what I like to call the disciples obedience, the disciples obedience. Let the church say obedience. Jesus says, go over to the city, and Luke says, you will find a man carrying a pitcher of water, and when you see him, ask him, where shall we, the Lord have his Passover meal? And he's going to show you a large upper room that has been furnished for the purpose of the Passover. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, that's real nice, but listen, we live in a culture where you would look at somebody real crazy walking around Flint with a bowl full of water that's been decontaminated just last week. Somebody help me right now. They would call him crazy. He could have a bottle of wine. He could be smoking a blunt. He could be walking down the street drinking a tall can of beer, but we would all think he was crazy if he was walking around with a pitcher of water. Help me, somebody. So, so in verse 19, so in verse 19, it says that the disciples did as the Lord directed them. So listen, I'm looking at you and you're looking at me because this is not making a lot of sense to you. But all I'm trying to say is that the Lord gives all of us assignments at some point in our lives that don't make sense. But if you follow the Lord's instructions, even if you don't have all of the details, when you get to the final product, it'll work out for your good. So that only God can get his glory. I've been preaching for almost 30 years now. When you do what, God, when you do what God's way, you'll get God's results. And I don't know if there's anybody here who's ever gone beyond the boundaries of normalcy to find God doing great things in your reality. I wonder, is there anybody here that can testify when you step out on God's word, you will get God's result. Help me, somebody. Bring your tithes unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, says the Lord. And he says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Amen. But there's somebody who's tried tithing, and you know that when you try the Lord, when you test the Lord, when you prove the Lord, he'll bless you in ways you've never imagined. I need 10 or 12 people in here who still believe that if you love your enemies, the Lord will make your enemies your footstool. Is there anybody in here who's ever seen him prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies? And let, me, and let me tell you that it doesn't always feel good, but when you do it God's way, you'll get God results. You may have to wait a little while. It may not show up when you want it. I need seven people in each section to testify. I've seen him bless me at the point of my obedience. Obedience is what facilitated the disciples' Passover dinner. If they had never been obedient, going into a city and dealing with these strange details that Jesus gave them, they never would have sat with him in the upper room and enjoyed this meal with Jesus. And somebody in here needs to understand that they had to get together because this was the time that they had to look back over their lives. 
look back over their shoulders and thank God for the way he spared their ancestors and kept them from generation to generation. And that obedience facilitated their sacred celebration. Listen, every one of us in here are here because of those who made sacrifices and have gone on to be with the Lord. You didn't get here without some assistance and some sacrifice. Our ancestors saw the blessing of God and every year the Jews celebrate the season to thank God for sparing their ancestors and keeping their ancestors because they're a more blessed generation than the generation before them. Please hear me when I tell you we're not self-made men, we're not self-made women. If it were not for some people who came before us who made sure that they obeyed God and did what God told them to do, you would not, you would, listen to this, you and I would not even be celebrating in this church today, in God's church today, somebody made a sacrifice and built this church of God's glory some years ago so we stand, there, we stand today on somebody else's shoulders, on somebody else's obedience whether you know it or not. Hmm. Is there anybody grateful for those that went without so that you can have? Is there anybody who wants to thank God for the folks who didn't have a college education but made sure you got one? Can I find somebody in church who's grateful that you're able to live where you live, drive what you drive, and know what you know? Your family never had a 401k, but you sit up in here with a little money in the bank. Somebody never had a retirement. They just kept living from paycheck to paycheck. But I can thank God that the reason we're in this building today is because some, some people came before us to sacrifice so that we could have. Anybody grateful that somebody sacrificed for you to have, that somebody prayed for you so you could have better? Anybody grateful today? You still got your communion, hold your communion. And he said, all of us here have made some sacrifices. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful. I know times have changed. I'm grateful for those that I'm grateful for those of you that have never been poor, like Minister Winfrey. <laughs> there's some people in this room never been broke. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be jealous of you because you've never been broke. <laughs> But there are some people sitting here who can thank God that the reason that you're doing so well as you are is because there were some people in your lives that went without. Somebody had holes in some shoes so that you could get some shoes with no holes in them. Let me say the reason that we need to vote every time. Let me tell you this. The reason that we need, every one of us need to vote every time there's an election to vote is because people went before us and sacrificed and gave us the right to vote. And then you talk about it don't make no sense to vote. No, it don't make no sense not to vote because we got to vote 45 away from the White House again. Help me, somebody. We need him in jail. Let the church say amen. Because if he go to heaven, I don't want to go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I just didn't want to put him in hell. Okay, that's what I did. <laughs> Listen, what Jesus was doing at the Lord's Supper table is he was giving us common attractions. He, 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 was, he, he, he was giving us a preview of coming attractions. What he did on Thursday night before his crucifixion is he was setting the disciples up for Friday afternoon. You do know what Good Friday represents. Jesus is letting them know what we're celebrating here is about to go to a whole different level. Because what I'm going to do for you in a few hours is not going to just give you a reflection of your history. It's going to make sure that your destiny is secure. Oh, if you're the only one on your roll, listen, okay. If you're the only one on your roll that got that, you need to wake the person up and say, hey, pastor's talking to you. I said what the disciples would experience in the next few hours is not just their history. The Passover lamb is about their destiny. The lamb who takes away the sin of the world and somebody ought to be grateful that you don't have to just look backwards to celebrate, but you can look at your right now and into your not yet and thank God he's working things out for your good. Is there anybody grateful? Bless his holy name. Jesus says, I'm setting this thing up so by the time you get to Friday afternoon at noon, although they won't be around the cross except for John, but what he does on Friday is he's going to secure their eternal salvation and my eternal salvation. So I am so grateful for the disciples' obedience. But we got to go a little further in the text. Because while they're eating supper, Jesus said, hey, brethren, one of you are going to betray me. And if you read your Bible, you'll find out that they all begin to ask, Lord, is it I? Let the church say, Lord, is it I? And Jesus says that the one that dips your, his hand in the bowl with me, that's the one that's going to betray me. And Judas dips his, his hand in the, low, in the bowl and said, Lord, is it I? And Jesus said, don't play crazy, Judas. You know you already set this thing up. You've been walking with me for three years, and we've let you be the treasurer of the money. And then when I was thinking about this, Pastor Jerome, while I was reading this, I said, why did Jesus allow Judas at the table? Why did, uh, why did Jesus allow Judas to even come to the party? You don't invite your enemies to the party. And then I begin to think, because the good news is that the Lord loves us so much that even though he knows we're going to offend him, he still gives us a seat at the table. You missed it. 
even though you, he knows you're going to deny him, betray him, offend him, he still gives you a seat. Anybody grateful you still got, no matter what you've done, you still got a seat at the table? Bless his holy name. And if you read the text in verse 23, it says, Woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man, and it has an exclamation mark behind it. An exclamation mark, in this case, a strong feeling. And what Jesus is saying is that this betrayal is not a singular offense. It's not just Judas offending him. It's a plural possessive meaning. All the disciples offended him at some time during the journey. Listen. I cannot allow you not to come to church on this Sunday and think we're just going to talk about how bad Judas was. I need you to look at that person sitting in your seat, wearing your shoes, occupying your space, and begin to testify, I got some junk in me too. I need 100% participation in class right now. I don't need just a few people participating. I need everybody participating in class right now. Is there anybody in here who knows that since the last time we gathered at the table, last Sunday, that some of you have offended the heart of God? And I truly believe, and I truly believe that God gets offended when people just show up on resurrection Sunday morning not because he hung, bled and died for them but they show up because it's Easter Sunday and they looking for the Easter bunny and Easter eggs because where are they this Sunday I hope they on live stream listening right now Matter of fact, there might be somebody in here sitting in service right now that has offended the heart of God. But is there anybody in here can get happy and testify, I still get a seat at the table. Don't you dare point your finger over there and say, she shouldn't be here. Don't you dare point your finger over there and say, he shouldn't be here. Because Jesus knows all of our stuff. And he says, come unto me, all of ye that are heavy laden, and I will, live, and I will give you rest. God help those of us that come to this table and forget we really don't belong here. God deliver us who have been such professional Christians for such a long time. We think we can see, we, we have a seat with our mean, judgmental dis, d demeanor. All the things that you committed since last Sunday, all the evil thoughts. And Jesus said, I love you too much to leave you to your own devices. Come here, sit yourself down because I want you to know I still love you. I still got plans for you plans are to prosper you not to harm you to give you hope and a future Jesus says I'm not trying I'm not working on your right now I'm trying to fix your not yet can, can I have a few more minutes can I have just a few more minutes the text is not just the disciples obedience and the disciples offense but the text is about the disciples obligation let the church say obligation let the church say obligation. obligation. When you keep reading this passage, I told you it goes from verses 17 to verse 30. When you keep reading the verses, you find that while they're eating, Jesus took bread. And after taking the bread, he blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, take eat. This is my broken body. Then the Bible says he took the cup. And when he took the cup, he said, drink all of it, for this is the new covenant in my blood let the church say new covenant, new covenant which is poured for the forgiveness of sin that's some good stuff right there he said listen here our obligation is now i want you to take this bread take this cup eat and drink and luke gives us this caveat luke luke, luke says jesus says do this in remembrance of me listen listen john says behold jesus is the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world. So the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is at the table. And the Lamb says that this is my body. And he broke it. He says, my body is going to be broken for you. And every time you eat it, I want you to do it in remembrance of the fact that you don't have to suffer the penalty for your sin. Because I'm taking it for you. Hmm. Now, that's why I let you sit at the table because I need you to know that the penalty for every offense you made is not going to be satisfied in just a few hours. When I go to the cross, it's not just for the broken body, it's the shedding of the blood. And the blood of the Lamb is poured out for me for the forgiveness. That's what the King James Version says for the forgiveness of sins, for the remission of sins. Jesus says, Listen, I want you to take this bread and take this cup 
And every time you eat and drink, I want you to remember what I did for you. Hold your, hold your cup up. Shake your cup around. Stick your cup up in the world or air and tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. That's why now we're not going to rush no more through the Lord's Supper. I thought about how important it was. I thought about how much it means of what he did for us. That we're not going to just run through the Lord's Supper no more like it's just some random act that we do out of religiosity. I want all of us to come to this table and remember he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I want us to come to this table and remember every single first Sunday that without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins. Aren't you glad that Jesus decided to give up his body and his blood so that you and I might be saved? The word, the word redeemed means to be brought back into right relationship with God. And I need to find somebody who's been redeemed sitting here at Second Chance Church who know good and well that your sins had you on the outside looking in. But Jesus said, because I love you so much, I can't leave you out there. I'm going to bring you in, and I'm going to pay the penalty for your sin and redeem you. And my Bible says, let the redeemed say so. So if you ain't saying nothing, I'm wondering about your redemption. Everybody in here who has been saved ought to say so right now. Everybody who's been brought back from the penalty of sin ought to say so right now. I said because the word says so. I didn't say nod your head. I said say so. I didn't say stamp your feet. I said say so. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Anybody thank God for saving you? I thank him for saving me. Somebody ought to say something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody want to tell the Lord thank you? Anybody want to tell the Lord I appreciate you? Anybody want to pour the Lord with your voice this afternoon? Woo. 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 I Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ooh. I got to close. I got to close, but I got one more thing. One more thing, which is the disciples' opportunity. Let the church say opportunity. opportunity. My Bible says, Jesus says, that my body is broken for you, but my blood is the blood for the new covenant, for the forgiveness of sins. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. Because the old covenant said the wages of sin is death. Yeah, but the new covenant says, but the gift of God is eternal life. Can I find anybody in here who know you were guilty, but you've been forgiven by the blood of the Lamb? I need somebody here who's been covered by the blood of the Lamb to help me close this message and begin to testify. I'm so grateful that the blood of Jesus was shed for me, so I came to church on this Sunday afternoon to inspire, to inform somebody, to encourage somebody that every time you think about the blood of Jesus, you don't just take it haphazardly, but every time you think about the blood that was poured out for you, you ought to thank God that you've been forgiven because you know good and well that you were guilty, but he looked beyond your faults and supplied all of your needs. Is there anybody grateful? 
you know you don't deserve opportunity. You know you don't deserve another chance. But the grace of God is so amazing that he refuses to let us go out by ourselves and so on this Sunday afternoon. I want to celebrate with somebody who knows good and well that you offended the heart of God, but he left room for you at the table to prove, he left room for you at the table to prove his forgiveness. It's stronger than your faults. His mercy is stronger than your mess. His grace is more sufficient than your grief. And somebody this afternoon ought to help me praise God that he keeps on giving us another chance. First Corinthians 11 and 28 says, let a man and a woman examine themselves. <laughs> it, did not, it did not say, examine your pew partner. It did not say, examine the racist folks in the city. Because you know good and well we've all made more mistakes than you want, we want anybody to know. So is there anybody that can thank God that he keeps on making a way for you? That's why I... That's, the reason I'm grateful is that when Jesus broke the bread, he didn't pass it out until he prayed over it. When he poured out the wine, he didn't drink it until he prayed to the Father. I need, to jo I need you to join me in thanking Jesus for his Passover party. Is there anybody in this house today who's looking forward to the glorious day when we shall see him face to face? Is there anybody who knows this is not the end? We're living to live. Anybody, is there anybody who can testify that one day when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing it will be when we all see Jesus we will sing and shout the victory no need for praying just shouting no need for repentance just shouting anybody grateful today you got the victory if you got the victory why don't you stand on your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise He says, take, eat. He says, take, eat. Bishop Bernadelle, would you come pray for us today? Before we take, we're going to have Bishop Bernadelle to pray with us. Hallelujah, glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for this another day. Thank you for this opportunity to partake of your community. For you said as often as we do this, do it in remembrance of you. The price that you paid, the strife that you took, the blood that you shed, the chance that you gave us to take away our sins, our opportunity to be with you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you're God of a second chance, a God of a third and a fourth chance. You're a merciful God. You're a forgiving God. And you're a right now God. God, we don't take this communion lightly. We remember the price that we pay. You pay. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given us. And as we break bread together, as we partake, we say thank you. We say forgive you. Give us of our sins. Forgive us, Lord. Every idle word, every idle deed God forgive us cleanse us and wash us 
and make us new. By your blood, restore us and make us whole. This is our servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Take eat. This represents his broken body. Drink ye all of it. But this represents the blood that's shed for the remission of all of our sins. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody ought to praise God right now. It reaches to the highest mountain. And, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. The blood that gives me strength from church Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. And if you're not shamed and not too bashful, open up your mouth and bless him. That's too quiet for the praise factory. Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and give him glory. Open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, we're so grateful. We're so thankful all that you've done for us hallelujah for anyone that is under the sound of my voice here or on live stream and you have not made a decision for jesus christ this is a wonderful opportunity for you to do it for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life sin separated us from god but he loved us so much that his son Jesus said, give me a body. I'll go do it. I'll go redeem him back to ourselves. And he came, lived 33 years, and died for us. There had to be shedding of blood for the remission of our sin. And Jesus did that willingly. He could have called some angels to come and change the situation. But he went through with it because God loved us so much. And then he did since, since they did. He's such a bad somebody. He told them, if you destroy it, I'm going to get up in three days. Tell somebody, say, guess what? That person he said, guess what? On the third day morning, he got up with all power. 
in his hands. Now, I thought I'd get a bit of a shot right there. On the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And just like Jesus got up out of that dead situation, you can get up out of your dead situation too. So the invitation is unto you. If you're here and you have not made a decision for Jesus Christ, we want you to know today is a good day. Today is a good day. We'll pray with you and teach you to, to know what it is. All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and the scripture says you shall be saved. Amen. Are there any new believers today? Any new believers here or online? If you're online, send us a message. If you're in the building, let us know right now. We'll pray with you. Any new believers, we're praying with you. We're praying. We're praying. Holy Spirit, do the work. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We just gonna consider it done. Amen. Amen. It's time to give. Amen. Amen. It's time to give. And God loves the what? Are y'all getting it? God loves the what? Cheerful giver. Come on, put a smile on your face and let's get ready to give our offering. I am standing on his front mess. I believe what his word says. I am standing on his front mess. I believe what his word says. I have faith that God will do just what he said. I am standing on the promises of God. I am standing, I am standing on his promise. I believe, I believe what his word says. I am standing, I am standing on his promise. I believe, I believe what his word says. I have faith, I have faith that God will do, will do just what he said. I am standing on the promises of God. I am standing on, I am standing on His promises. I believe what His word says. I am standing on His promise. I believe. I believe what His word says. I have faith. I have faith. We don't know. I am standing on the promises of God. Oh, if God said it, if God said it, I believe it. I believe it, if God, if God said it, I believe it, I believe it, if God said it, if God said it, I believe, I believe it, if God, if God said it, I believe it, I believe it, I am standing on the promises of I believe it. I believe it. That's good enough. 